Boa noite, senhoras e senhores. Sejam bem-vindos à 31ª Academia de Distintos Empreendedores e ao evento inaugural da Babson, chamado Palco do Mundo. Boa noite, damas e senhores. Welcome to um the 31 Academy of Entrepreneurs in Babson's best occasion, the World's Stadium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ama Sefadere, and I'm the daughter of university professors in Ghana. I have three great passions, children, building businesses, and equipping people with skills to succeed in life. After graduating from college, I quickly realized that I needed further education to achieve my ambitions and become the change maker I dreamed of being. From a continent away, I chose Babson because it was the very best place I could find to learn to successfully launch and grow a business of any kind, anywhere. As co-founder and executive director of One Hen Inc., my own business has taken off. One Hen is a nonprofit that equips children to be social entrepreneurs by teaching them skills like financial responsibility, global awareness, taking personal initiative, and most important of all, teaching them that personal success should always be married to giving back to one's community. In less than two years, we have established programs in the US, in the UK, in Canada, and in Ghana, and educators from over 130 countries use our materials. Because of Babson, I'm ready to take my place on the world stage. Good evening. My name is Craig Wing, and I come from a working class family in South Africa. In my country, opportunity has been passed to the lucky and to the few. And tonight, I consider myself amongst the luckiest to be here. In my first company, I created a piece of equipment that allowed partially sighted children to see again. And through this process, I fell in love with business as a means for both uh, economic as well as societal gain. As a result of which, I chose the most respected entrepreneurial training ground in the world, Babson College. I passionately believe that private enterprise will be at the heart of our global economic recovery. As the graduate um, leader of uh, the MBA school, I want to lead the way, not just here, but in my country as well. I am ready to open the door to the world stage for the many, not just for the few. Good evening. My name is Hale Zaid and I was raised in Kuwait. The power and influence of women entrepreneurs in Kuwait is growing at a rapid rate. I want to be a part of that movement and I want to help lead it. In part, that is why I'm at Babson. The college is committing to leveraging the power, talent and market power of women entrepreneurs everywhere. In order to continue my interest in the Middle East, last summer I helped Babson Center for Women's Leadership organize module two of the US Saudi Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. The forum was conducted in partnership between Babson College, Wellesley College, Dad and Hikmah College, and ICF International. It was inspiring to witness 30 young women entrepreneurs learning about leadership in business and utilizing the tools to create their own enterprises so that they can take them back to their own communities. Through being a part of the Women's Leadership Program, Babson is helping me strengthen my skills so that I can combat barriers and create opportunities. When I leave here and go back to Kuwait, I will be persistent to be seen and heard on the world stage. Like my fellow Arab sisters, there is much I have to say. Hi, my name is John Campbell, and let me tell you why Saturday, May 15th of 2011, will be a proud day for me, my parents, and my four brothers. That day is graduation day at Babson, and I will become the first college graduate in my family. I grew up in a tough part of New Jersey, where only 20% of the students of the kids went on to college. Dreams didn't last long in my neighborhood, but I got a break. There was someone who was looking out for me who referred me to Babson. In fact, it was the same person who would later become a professor 
who told me that when there's a will, there's a way. And when it seems like there's neither, not to call him. <laughs> now this actually speaks volumes about the true spirit of an entrepreneur. Being independent, having the ability to recognize problems, whether, recognize and solve problems, whether yourself, yours, or someone else's. It was, in fact, it was the bootstrapping techniques that I learned from this gentleman that enabled me to purchase my first investment property without any of my own capital invested in or a subprime mortgage. <laughs> so today, I stand before you as president of the Student Government Association for the second straight year. And as of yesterday, I'm honored to say that I've just been reelected by my peers for a third term. It's an honor. Thank you. I'm also the owner of Foot Traffic in Boston, a sneaker store which sells shoes to fan shoe fanatics, as well as regular folks who just want a good old pair of running shoes. Along with our business, we've established a nonprofit known as Grow a Pair, which provides sneakers and hope. <laughs> Grow a pair of sneakers <laughs> and hope to, to underprivileged children, both domestically and internationally. I believe that it's important to give back as soon as you can. So I guess you could say that I'm living the dream, the dream of being an independent entrepreneur, a builder, and a creator. So turn up the microphone and focus the lights. The curtain has gone up on my world stage. For nine years, I have seen entrepreneurship change the lives of 30,000 women in Brazil. Hi. I'm Larissa Mota, and I believe entrepreneurship can change the world. I came to Babson with the dream of helping and supporting small businesses to flourish. I don't know if you know, but in Brazil, 98% of all the job opportunities are created for, by small businesses who strive to survive. But at Babson, I understood the power of entrepreneurial thought and action and how to use it to make a difference in business and also in society. I believe we all are able to develop an entrepreneurial mindset and heart. Surprisingly, after Babson, I'll be taking my entrepreneurial spirit and know-how and joining a well-established marketing firm. Like my fellow graduates, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves, create opportunities, and deliver solutions. Ultimately, I'll be going back to my home country, but Babson has provided me with a larger perspective of the world, with the tools to execute, and with a network to make change happen in any setting, anywhere on the world stage. You may think that someone who is passionate about the performing arts and the visual arts would not choose a school like Babson. But that's because you don't know me. Hi, my name is Vanessa Theo Harris, and welcome to the world stage. Throughout high school, I excelled in the performing arts. I loved acting, singing, dancing, directing. I enjoyed the entire artistic experience from Shakespeare to Sondheim. But I soon discovered that where I wanted to bring my passion was not on center stage as a performer, but rather pacing the wings as a theatrical producer. I don't want to just celebrate the arts, I want to sell them. Over the next few years, I will be honing my skills in marketing and sales really studying consumer behavior, analyzing trends, and understanding the human condition. I want to make the arts as irresistible to consumers as they are irresistible to me. I also want to use the arts to communicate in new, fresh ways, especially about crucial human rights issues. For example, last year I was proud to bring the Matthew Shepard Memorial Project to Babson, featuring scenes from the Laramie Project, to ignite deep discussion about love and morality. I was so excited to bring this discuss these discussions to Babson, and I hope that my work at Babson will inspire others to also partake in ar artistic activism. Babson has taught me how to think creatively, how to turn an idea from nothing into something, something special, something provocative, something that won't be forgotten. Because I know all the world's a stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Jacobs, and I started my career as an entrepreneur when I was nine years old in Rochester, New York. I wasn't big enough to drive a tractor or push a lawnmower, so my father gave me a leaf blower, and I started my first company. In six short years, my brother and I took S&J Lawn Care into a full-service company 
employing several Bosnian refugees, giving them their first full-time paying jobs in this country. When I came to Babson, I founded the College Saver through my foundation, management, and entrepreneurship course. This course requires all students to launch and liquidate a business in one academic year, donating all profits to charity. The College Saver was a direct mail company that linked local businesses to the college student campus. When I was finished with my FME course, I decided to take it into the real world. I expanded our services into a consulting firm and by doing so acquired clients like Whole Foods and Cox Media. Last summer, I sold College Saver to a larger marketing firm in the industry. My newest company is Emergent Energy Group Incorporated. Emergent plans, designs, and facilitates the advancement of on-site renewable energy projects that help schools, businesses, and communities secure their energy future. Did I mention I, I haven't graduated yet? <laughs> and my student loans are almost paid off. I'm proud to tell you, and my parents are even prouder to tell you, that Business Week named me the top young entrepreneur of 2009. world stage, I'm on it. Please welcome to the world stage CEO of BNY Mellon Wealth Management and event co-chair David Lemire. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is unbelievable, isn't it, those stories? Absolutely unbelievable. <clears throat> Together with the Board of Trustees, the faculty, and especially the students, not the least of which who just left the stage, let me welcome you. It's my pleasure to have you here at the world stage this evening. I can't tell you that there's not one person in this room who looked around as they were talking and said, oh my God, could I have done that at that age? There's not a chance I could have, I can tell you that much. The poise, the accomplishment, I mean, that's really what we're here about. We're gonna honor people who have been doing this for 20 years and 25 years, and we have in the past, but we've got some budding stars right in front of us tonight. It's been my pleasure to co-chair the event this year, along with the Honorable Craig Benson. I'd like to thank you for starting this with us, Craig, putting the work in to get the inaugural event going. And I'd also like to thank our wives, Denise and Laura, for their support in the process. Tonight, we're going to celebrate and advance entrepreneurship, the intangible spark that drives inventors, builders, originators, and business people to turn challenges into opportunities. At Babson, we've made it our business to take this intangible process of creative thought and action and make it tangible and, as an academic center, to create a living laboratory where we experiment, where we improve, where we evolve, and where we learn how to teach entrepreneurship. We continue to be recognized globally for our work as the world's leading institution for entrepreneurial education. In fact, many of you know the Financial Times recently named Babson as the world's number one school for entrepreneurship. And the U.S. and News World Report has awarded Babson this same distinction 16 years in a row. <clears throat> Yet for the first time in our long history of inducting business leaders into this academy, tonight we're opening this up to an even bigger and more close-to-home audience. We have a very real goal tonight and to start the process of creating this same awareness and same recognition of this incredible institution, the same that it has internationally, we want it to be right here in our own backyard. And that audience tonight is you. You are the inaugural audience. Tonight, the Babson and the Boston communities come together like they have not in the past. Thank you for helping us set that milestone for the college and launching what we hope will become a new tradition for us in the community. By way of background, many of you are familiar, but the tradition that I just referenced that we start tonight is really three decades old. For 31 years, Babson has recognized 
and celebrated entrepreneurs on the world stage. Since we established the Academy, Barry Gordy has been here to talk about selling records. Arthur Blank has shared stories about drill bits and kitchen cabinets. Robert Rosenberg has talked about the incredible Dunkin' Donut history. Ellen Gordon talked about selling Tootsie Rolls. And our friend Bob Kraft talked about selling a Super Bowl dream and a reality. Each one of them has talked about the creative spark that ignited their business idea and the products and services that they've created. Tonight, we're going to meet an entrepreneur whose end product is nothing short of saving lives. We are thrilled tonight to be honoring Henry Tamir from Genzyme Corporation, but you will hear much more about Henry and his incredible story, story a little later in the program. So tonight is about bringing into focus the magic of learning that is created and nurtured on the Babson campus. But as we all know, in order to get the most out of this special environment, you must have a very unique leader. Len Schlesinger is that leader. Since becoming the 12th president of Babson in 2008, that's not very long ago, Len has crystallized a cohesive vision for Babson's future and its contribution to entrepreneurship. Building on a century of history, but also laying the groundwork for a bold and exciting future, Len has done it all with passion, with a lot of energy, and with an insatiable appetite to ensure that Babson continues to be the leader in the world of entrepreneurship. Please welcome to the world stage, the president of Babson College, Len Schlesinger. This is the coolest job in the world, especially on nights like tonight. Because one of the things that I'm obliged to do as a college president is to talk about all of the marvelous things uh, that Babson does for the young people that you see up here. Yeah, we do. But be very clear about the fact that all of us who work at Babson are as powerfully shaped by the folks we have who come to the school here as we provide for them on a go-forward basis. These are just a microcosm of an extraordinary population of people that we have at the school that we have the privilege of interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis who go on to do everything from the mundane to extraordinary, but do it in an incredibly different way than those who are educated at more traditional institutions. This is really a special celebration of entrepreneurship at its best. And given the fact that they have already given you ample evidence and David has already talked about all of the bragging things about Babson. I got nothing else to talk about other than to thank people for bringing us here tonight. I want to thank the event sponsors for their generous financial support. Uh, our visionary investors, Bank New York Mellon, Genzyme Corporation, and Craig Benson, an enormously dedicated Babson trustee, a member of the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs himself from 1995, and former governor of New Hampshire. Craig, along with trustee Dave Lemire as co-chairs of World Stage, provided the leadership for tonight's event. We're deeply indebted to the two of them. Our venture investors, Bob and Jan Weissman. Bob's been a tremendous Babson trustee and is chair of our capital campaign. Bob and Jan have both been incredibly active and devoted to Babson in every possible way. Our angel investors, and please do look to the screen for a listing of these companies and individuals. And then I'd also like to recognize our media sponsors, Boston Business Journal, Mass High Tech, and New England Cable News, a Comcast network. Our heartfelt thank you goes to all of our sponsors for making this first time event such a great success. One of the nice things that people told me as I was walking in, going through all of the aspects of the nervousness and the folks who were kind of organizing the event say, stop being nervous. You've paid for it already. <laughs> Okay. And there's more coming in than went out. Uh, so it's already a success, and it's a success because of you. Uh, and a heartfelt thank you goes to all the sponsors for here, and please join me in giving them a warm round of applause. The thing that allows me to consider myself to be so lucky to be the president of this institution is simply put, there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. 
because our uncertain world is exactly the kind of environment where entrepreneurs flourish. The more uncertainty there is in the marketplace, the more reliant entrepreneurs are on themselves. Rather than find opportunities, uncertainty enables them to make opportunities. And not only personal success, but the well-being of our society is inextricably tied to entrepreneurs, as you see from our group of seven here this evening. Entrepreneurial businesses generate new jobs, they generate income growth, and opportunities for other aspiring entrepreneurs. Whether you're in Chile or China, Italy or India, South Africa or South Carolina, we live on what truly has become an entrepreneurial planet. There is no institution on the face of the earth that is better able than Babson College to teach and be taught by people who have the mindset, the tools, and the skills to succeed in an environment of constant and rapid change. Why? We've been at this for decades. 32 years since we had a public acknowledgement of our position in the entrepreneurship space. And during that time, we've been the source of every single significant pedagogical innovation in the field. I'm not exaggerating. Right? Every single significant pedagogical innovation in the field of entrepreneurship can trace its roots to Babson College. And this year, as Dave said, we won the trifecta in entrepreneurship rankings, winning US News and World Report, Financial Times, and Princeton Review all simultaneously. Now, I'm not a very competitive person, <laughs> but there wasn't a trifecta. We just labeled it as such. And when we won the trifecta, our colleagues at Mass High Tech and Boston Business Journal sent a reporter to talk to us about what's in the water at Babson College that causes this to happen. And we gave them essentially the same kind of conversation that we're having here tonight. Uh, and they wrote about it. And they said, and by the way, you should actually go talk to people at other schools and discover they're not at all like us. You know, they have entrepreneurship courses. We teach and live entrepreneurship. So they went to a well-known engineering school just down the road over here uh, and, uh, and asked them, why is it? Why is it that you have such a phenomenal institution with such an extraordinary reputation and you get your butt kicked by Babson every single year? Now the folks at a well-known Eastern business school on the other side of the street refused to respond. But the folks at the engineering school bit. And they quoted in the newspaper, it's one of those marvelous things. They said, you know, we've created all these jobs, we have all these courses, we have all these technologies, we have thousands of alumni, we've done all of these things, and we look at it every year, and every year we're number three, and Babson's number one, and frankly, we're befuddled. <laughs> so I issued an invitation, okay, because we actually are only 13 miles away from that institution and you neither need a passport nor a visa to visit. And my guess is with a two hour visit, they'll understand it cold. They'll understand it's part of the DNA. They'll understand we drink it in the water. They understand that we live this day in and day out. Our definition of entrepreneurship is all encompassing and highly adaptive. adaptive. Our faculty, many of whom are here tonight, our staff, many of whom here tonight, all of whom deserve exactly the same applause and same credit of this, as the seven folks that you had up here talking about their lives and their dreams. They all thrive in our entrepreneurial culture in and outside of the classroom. The folks you heard from here this evening are the kinds of leaders that have come to represent everything great that Babson stands for and why I can say with absolute conviction, what we are doing, what we are teaching, what we are learning is the most powerful tool for economic and social value we have in the world, bar none. Nothing is more powerful than what we get to do, and doing it in the environment we're doing it in is a privilege for all of us who get to interact with the students that we work with. We also practice what we teach. 
We're always reinventing ourselves as faculty and as an institution through new strategies, through curriculum innovation, and through deeper partnerships with folks like you here tonight. Now more than ever, organizations and governments from all over the world are coming to us, recognizing that many people 13 miles away are just beginning to discover tonight. That entrepreneurship is the surest route to prosperity, and that Babson provides one of the surest routes to entrepreneurial success. For years, people sought us out for very specific kinds of help. Programs to train entrepreneurship educators, programs to bring together family businesses from around the globe, and to undertake global research on entrepreneurship. And all of these programs continue to exist today, and each and every one of them is in fact the gold standard in their respective areas. But today it's not just about entrepreneurship seminars. Today it's not just about courses, and it's not just about collaborative research, as important as these are. Increasingly, we're being asked to take a much more inclusive approach by linking entrepreneurial education to entrepreneurial ecosystems with mentors, advisors, accounting and legal services, and of course, capital. And if you can have both entrepreneurial education and a robust infrastructure, you dramatically increase the possibility of great things happening. Let me just give you a few stories, things that are going on at your Babson over the last year. Over the last year, leaders in Saudi Arabia came to us to work with them for an entrepreneurship strategy for youth and women, to work with them to develop a first-of-its-kind college, a world-class entrepreneurial center in a new economic city in Saudi Arabia, all kinds of technical advice. In fact, we are being asked to play a major leadership role over the last year in helping them to develop their own entrepreneurial ecosystem. So, that's interesting. Two months ago, a group came to us from a small city in Colombia, Manizales, a city of 370,000 people, came to us and said, you are the gold standard for entrepreneurship education. You are the gold standard for entrepreneurship knowledge. We would like you to work with us to help us develop a more entrepreneurial society in Manizales. A single benefactor, a single philanthropist who wants to leave his legacy as having created a more entrepreneurial society in his hometown. We're charting completely and totally unchartered territory with this work. Here in the United States just a few months ago, Goldman Sachs partnered began the process of partnering with us in a program called 10,000 Small Businesses, an effort to work with urban and rural distressed minority executives to actually pair entrepreneurship and small business education with an ecosystem of advisors and mentors, $300 million of capital into distressed areas, more than twice of what was spent in the United States with CFDIs all of last year. And where did they go? They went to a lot of different places. Who have they focused on using to develop this curriculum and make this happen? My colleagues at Babson. So it's Goldman Sachs. It's Saudi royalty and the economic advisors. It's a small city in Colombia. And it's the thousands of students we have the opportunity to interact with day in and day out and the alumni who are here in this room. I do not believe there is any other institution on the face of the earth that can be an educational provider for an entrepreneurial planet better than Babson College. That's why we're here tonight. This is what we're trying to educate lots of people about. This is the message that we're trying to get out. And there's no better way to do that than to communicate that with you and then also celebrate the joys of the great works of entrepreneurship like Henry Tamir. So we've been ramping up the ways in which we share our knowledge and expertise with the world, but tonight's event marks our intention, okay? Our intention to be deeply involved locally in the Boston region as well. Our alumni have been doing this indirectly for years. The region is filled with Babson entrepreneurs, CEOs, and CFOs. And we're enormously pleased to be able to do so this evening as we honor an outstanding entrepreneur from the region. Now in this age of YouTube, we all know the impact of a short, well-crafted video. Because in fact, probably in about two minutes with a video that you're about to see, okay, 
uh, we can actually do everything that I just did in about 14 minutes. So you're about to see one of the best. Okay? And not surprisingly, it was produced by two BAPS and alumni, Siamak Tagados and David Hauser, both co-founders of Grasshopper, a company that helps entrepreneurs build their businesses. And their video, in the best way possible, captures the essence of entrepreneurship as we talk about it and think about it. Thanks so much to our colleagues from Grasshopper. This video celebrates the entrepreneurial community wherever they are, in a family enterprise, in a corporation, in a startup, or a social venture in this region or around the world. It illustrates and personifies the best part of Muhammad Yunus's view of entrepreneurship when he says, we are all entrepreneurs. We all have the capacity to be entrepreneurs. Only too few people get to practice it. This is the kind of energy we just saw and will celebrate tonight with Henry Tremier because he brought it to his company and to an entire industry. And it's the same kind of energy that will change the world. After dinner tonight, we'll hear more about how Henry Tamir built a small company into one of the world's leading biotech firms. And at the same time, has been providing extraordinary leadership in research, in mentoring, and in humanitarian activities. He is unquestionably, and without a doubt, a quintessential entrepreneur. So please do enjoy your meal, and we'll continue our program after dinner. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the World Stage event co-chair, the Honorable Craig Benson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to interrupt your conversations. There's a lot going on, and I, it feels pretty special to be out there speaking to everybody with all the energy in this room. I'm pleased that I wasn't Dave Lemire a few minutes ago when he had to get up and speak after those terrific students spoke. So thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to be here tonight and to engage all of you in this wonderful evening. It's um, also my pleasure to thank Dave Lemire and his wife Laura for co-sponsoring this event. Denise and I are pleased to do it, and I'd also like to thank all of the sponsors that have taken part in this event as well. You know, a few years ago in 1995, I was fortunate to be inducted into the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs with a pretty good group of entrepreneurial people. Arthur Blank... Bernie Marcus, my own partner, Bob Levine, as well as Ned Johnson from Fidelity. And one of the things that uh, became very evident to me in meeting those great people was they realized as they got bigger and bigger that it wasn't about them or their ideas or their ways of doing business. It was about hiring other great entrepreneur entrepreneurial minds to come up with great new ways to keep those businesses flourishing. So whether it was the associates at Home Depot, the great financial professionals at Fidelity, or the engineers at my own company, hiring entrepreneurs is the key to success. And funny, after I got inducted into the Academy of Entrepreneurs, I went on to be governor, and I thought about taking that same spirit right to the State House in New Hampshire. And people laughed at me about that. But they're not laughing now because Mayor Michael Bloomberg, also an ADE recipient in 2003, has done the exact same thing in New York City. And it's clear to me that not only in business, but in politics, we need lots of entrepreneurs to make this country stronger and better than it's ever been. And tonight, I have the honor of introducing to you somebody who's done a terrific job at Zen Genzyme, Henry Tamir. He's been CEO of that company for 27 years. 
he is really stand out in his field because he has put in 27 years at a fast growing firm and made things happen. He's somebody that started when Genzyme was very, very small, but realized, like other great entrepreneurs, that he had to bring with him the insights and passion and determination to drive other people to think entrepreneurially in his own firm so that it could flourish. And he has done a terrific job of that. And the thing about Henry is those early days showed him all the potentials and opportunities, but the latter days were when he had to deliver and make things happen. And he's done a terrific job, not only in his own company, but in his community. He's a real leader in the healthcare industry. He's a real leader in the New England area. He is somebody that is selfless. He gives of himself to many different causes. And he's allowed an industry to flourish in this area, which is spawning a whole new way of life for very many people throughout New England. Henry realizes that what he does affects many people. But he also realizes that you build a bridge one brick at a time and that the lives that he is helping to make better are made better one at a time. And it's my honor to introduce to you somebody who's been touched by the great work of Genzyme and Henry Tamir. I want to welcome for you someone that understands very directly the difference that Henry Tamir has made in their lives. He's with us. His name is Anith Rahman, and he will join us on stage now and give the great story of his eight-year-old daughter, Nadita's life, and talk to us in more detail about the great things that happened at Genzyme. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for inviting Padmaja and me to speak today to honor and celebrate Henry Tamir's achievements. We came here this evening substantially because of Henry Tamir and Genzyme, but also because of Len Schlesinger, who has been a friend for many years. Let me start the speech by saying that Babson could not have made a better choice for president. All right. <clears throat> It is appropriate that you asked a patient family to honor Mr. Tamir today. To understand Henry Tamir's achievements, you have to understand the diseases that cause Genzyme to exist. <clears throat> this gets personal, all right? Our family was introduced to one of the rare diseases that Genzyme fights in September 2005. A routine visit to the pediatrician turned into one of our worst nightmares. Well, there she was in 2005. The pediatrician informed us that our seven-month-old daughter, Nandita, had a seriously enlarged heart. And just in case we might understand the seriousness of the problem, she told us, you're going to Children's Hospital and you're staying there. The news got, progress <clears throat> I'm sorry. The news got progressively worse during the next few days and weeks. The doctor said, the doctor suspected and then confirmed that Nandita suffered from infantile Pompe disease. We searched the internet quickly and learned from the internet that the condition was usually fatal before the patient's first birthday. And in stark words, the internet also assured us that there was no treatment available. <clears throat> we realized as parents, we had months, at most, before the disease took an even more serious turn. Our first emotion, in all honesty, was despair. But as we talked to the scientific community, the despair turned to hope. And in many of our con conversations with scientists, with doctors, hope was spelt genzyme. One expert, one expert told us, Tell your daughter to hang in there, because in five years, we will not simply treat this disease, we will cure it. 
It was just a matter of time before the scientific community would manage to beat this disease. After all, we realized it was barely 60 years ago that penicillin had been discovered. We simply could not give up, though it was recommended to us multiple times. Through our multiple hospital visits, including one 71-day stay in the ICU, we knew we had to hang in there for our little princess. <clears throat> now, just as in a war, our Pompeii War too had challenging moments, but also, and it's easy to forget that, multiple victories. <clears throat> Slowly, myozyme, Genzyme's drug, began to work its magic. In a few years, Nandita's heart would revert to normal performance and normal size. The impossible had been achieved on one front. Much needed to be done before we could declare victory, but the first round had gone to Nandita, Genzyme, and the medical community. Team Nandita had pushed this game into extra innings. And for that, today, Padmaja and I would like to thank the scientists, physicians, nurses, and therapists who have fought this battle alongside Nandita. Thank you. <clears throat> but in acknowledging the medical community's contributions, one should not forget the tremendous role played by entrepreneurs like Henry. Entrepreneurs like Henry convince investors they navigate the maze that is our healthcare system. They motivate a diverse and highly talented team and execute on numerous daily tasks. Clearly, without the work of entrepreneurs like Henry, the work of many scientists would not bear fruit even in the lab, leave alone at scale commercially. <clears throat> the world, I believe, urgently needs more science-based entrepreneurs like Henry. By that, I mean the rare breed of entrepreneur who understands science and business at considerable depth. Producing such mandates should be part of the man I'm sorry, producing such entrepreneurs should be part of the mandate for schools like Babson. It is these entrepreneurs who are the scarcest resource in the war against rare diseases. My sincere hope is that in honoring Henry today, Babson is creating a beacon of inspiration for students and young managers seeking to discover their passion in life. I hope at least some of your young students will follow Henry's path and become science entrepreneurs. <clears throat> now to the young students, including the ones we heard from earlier this evening, who will be inspired by Henry's example, I would simply say that to understand Henry's success, you have to understand his relentlessness. The early days of Genzyme were not easy. I'm sure, like many other entrepreneurs, Henry was counseled not to chase the impossible. As a father, I'm sure glad he persevered. Now, no amount of sales growth, gross margin, or return on equity can motivate a person to such relentlessness to pursue the insane dream of achieving the impossible. Such relentlessness stems from the heart, not from the head. Henry, we recognize you today for creating a major corporation with many great products and thousands of employees. But we also, for, for playing a vital role in creating life-saving drugs that have saved the lives of so many patients, including our daughters, we celebrate you today for steadfastly sticking to the task while lesser hearts walked away. We are grateful today for motivating thousands of employees who collectively added years to our child's life and restored a smile to her face. Yes, restored a smile to her face. We thank you today. And finally, by personal example, Henry, you have reminded the world and the medical community and the healthcare system that children like Nandita are not simply a disease, but they have a soul. I repeat, they're not simply a disease, but they have a soul. You honored her, Henry, and for that, Padmaja and I joined Babson in honoring you today. <clears throat> Thank you.
before I close, Padmajan and I would like to remind Henry, Genzyme, and the wider scientific community that their task is not complete. As parents, we play this game not simply to draw but to win. You have pushed this game into extra innings, and for that we are incredibly grateful. But we need a walk-off home run now. Kids like Nandita still face many challenges. Nandita, for example, depends on a ventilator to breathe and cannot walk or even stand and assist him. We do not know what the future will bring. You have converted a family's despair to hope, and for that, we thank you. You now need to convert that hope to confidence. You have given us years with Nandita that we did not have, but in the battle against Pompeii and other rare diseases, there are miles to go before we can all sleep. Keep up the good work, Henry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. No jokes. It's an incredibly remarkable story. And your family has shown tremendous courage. And just one more time, we want to thank you for sharing your experience with us tonight, because it really is an illustration of the power of entrepreneurship to change reality. And, uh, and we do wish you the best as friends and also as beneficiaries of the evolution of the medical community and Genzyme in particular. So thank you so much. <laughs> now it's that time in our program when we officially welcome Henry Tamir into Babson's Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs. So Henry, will you please join me up on the stage? Professor Candy Brush, Chairperson of the Entrepreneurship Division at Babson College, and I would like to present you with this award uh, in honor of your joining the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs on April 7, 2010. This begins now to take on all of the trappings of a commencement ceremony. <laughs> Henry Tremere, you join an extraordinarily distinguished group of entrepreneurs who are members of Babson's Academy. From our own Craig Benson and Bob Kraft to international entrepreneurs like Suichiro Honda and Sunil Bharti Mittal. This is a group whose impact on the world in terms of their creation of both economic and social value has been enormous. In addition to welcoming you into our academy, we're also honored to present you with the Babson Prize, a special recognition that we've established for academy members, and you are our first recipient. This fall, Babson will award a four-year scholarship in your name to an incoming freshman who demonstrates the potential for the kind of entrepreneurial leadership that has been the hallmark of your career of achievement and service. Can we offer you the prize? <laughs> and can we come for pictures? <laughs> you just entertain yourself while we're taking some photos right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 2010 Babson Academy of Distinguished Award, uh, Entrepreneurship Award winner, Henry Tremere. Thank you, thank you so much. And, uh, it's, um, of course, with enormous humility 
that um, I stand here and touch uh, that word and listen to uh, Anand's story. And um, uh, it's just quite special to be here among you and to uh, recall for a moment um, what entrepreneurship can do. And uh, I will try to recall for you in a few minutes how I experienced that entrepreneurship. Before I do, let me just thank my wife, Belinda, who is here, who is... <laughs> the true winner of this award. And uh, the other great woman in my life, my mother, who is still, he's 95 years old, still alive, who is still advising me about what to do and what not to do. <laughs> and <laughs> apologize for not being here. And some of my colleagues who are here, uh, you know, we have now 12,000 people. And it is very clear from that uh, it's almost nothing you can do by yourself. Um, everything that becomes really useful in a broader sense um, requires lots of people. Uh, and uh, Jensen is no different. Uh, we are tremendously blessed with magnificent entrepreneurs, uh, people that have been living the story, are living the story. And it's of course a story that you can understand. None of us in this room were mistaken about the patient. We heard about a minute ago. And that's where uh, I uh, have to say that in my background, um, like any entrepreneur, I had uh, some great fortune. Some things that happened that were truly very special, very unique. And it allowed me to develop the energy and the confidence and the drive and the stick to itness and the relentlessness and the single mindedness to always continue, to never give up. You know, early in the career, uh, early in the startup of Genzyme, we worked on a disease like this disease, a lysosomal storage disease, uh, called Gaucher disease, where patients miss a particular enzyme and lipids accumulate in the spleen, the liver, the bone marrow, and little kids look like they've swallowed the basketball. That's how I got introduced in 1984. I met a child that had looked like it swallowed the basketball. Um, and uh, we tried an experimental therapy that we produced on the 15th floor in Chinatown, here in Boston, um, extracted in an old building from placental tissue. And we needed tens of thousands of placental tissues sent us to produce a little bit of product to help a patient. And we gave this patient this experimental product, a three-year-old boy who was uh, very ill. He was at, in Bethesda at the NIH, um, and it was very lethargic and couldn't really move very well. Uh, had become known in that environment at the NIH. Everybody felt terribly sorry. Nobody knew what to do. This was... An, experimental therapy that maybe could work. And remarkably, it worked. And it worked because we were able to take the enzyme and modify it in such a way that when you inject it, uh, infuse it into the body, it would find the right place where it needed to go in order to break down uh, these lipids. And every time we ran out of uh, enzyme, because uh, we went with a little car around to hospitals in New England to get the placentas, and we would run out many a time, the patient, this little boy, would get worse. And uh, it was a remarkable experience. Those of us that were fortunate to be close to that experience today cannot talk about this experience and not uh, become emotional about it. Uh, because it is uh, when you get these breakthroughs, these moments, uh, when you suddenly feel so many things confirmed for yourself. Um, and it is such 
a tremendous driver of energy then, then follows to say, okay, now I have the responsibility to take this forward. IDs are but an opportunity. But once you have something that works, it becomes a responsibility. And uh, we took that forward, and it is a long story, made longer than we have tonight, but a magnificent story. In the middle of the HIV crisis, and, and in the middle of this, um, at one point, think of this, uh, one third of all placentas that came from birth in this country, this large country, the United States, over a million, million two, and 70% of all placentas in Western Europe found their place in a little town outside of Lyon in France, Marcy l'Etoile, where we had built a plant next to the Pasteur Marieu Institute, where we could extract the enzyme from these placentas to treat about, in the end, about a thousand kids. That was, of course, very primitive technology. But it wasn't primitive in the sense that the enzyme was the right enzyme, the human enzyme, the enzyme that we as healthy people have. But it was primitive to produce it in that way, and it was replaced by recombinant technology that we now uh, produce in Alston. And uh, it became uh, obsolete very quickly once we replaced it with recombinant technology. Uh, it was a remarkable moment, and, and uh, it was clearly that moment of fortune, that moment of discovering that you actually can do something where everybody declares you crazy to do it. Uh, people, I had uh, to listen for 10 years to advice to say, you are out of your mind. It's not even biotechnology what you're doing. It's extracting. And uh, 20,000 plus cents, who are you kidding? Who can you help? It is a tease. It doesn't work. Uh, and it did work. And um, when I saw these seven or eight students here earlier, I recognized in them that same flame that I had then and still feel today, that need to do something about it. The notion of understanding something, seeing something that isn't been seen by somebody else, and going after it. it, it sometimes you may say, wow, this person is overconfident. We all thought these seven were pretty confident, I thought. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but they're all right. Uh, we all can relate to them. Because they were seeing something and they were going to go after it. And the world is not small, when you think that way. Uh, for each of them, the world was massive. It was the world. It was the world stage. Which is uh, also something that is an important thing to teach uh, all of us, all of our children, that the world is not Boston. The world is not Massachusetts or the United States. The world is everywhere. And we have to think on a world scale. We were fortunate in this uh, Gaucher disease example. Uh, it became global from the beginning because it, there were so few patients. Uh, we were able to do this a number of more times. And uh, about 14, 15 cases where we were able to either connect into something that was discovered wherever, somewhere else and brought it into the company as things that were uh, worked on within the company. Almost in every case it involved many people coming together. The greatest uh, uh, characteristic I think of, of an entrepreneurial person is uh, that you're not proud. You don't need to discover it yourself. You need to just see it where it is. You need to recognize it. And you need to be able to get access to it and work where, with the people that have access and combine it so that you can carry it forward. The greatest problem is when you just limit yourself to your own resources. Um, and uh, we were fortunate in many ways that we connected in many places around the world uh, to get certain things done. The other thing is we're now a much larger uh, operation, quite obviously, and the challenges are different. You know, uh, you, you've read about the challenges that we are facing uh, at the moment, and, and I was very happy to see in this uh, video that uh, turbulence is an opportunity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
and, uh, and uh, uh, we have an opportunity. <laughs> and we will take care of this opportunity as never before. <laughs> and capture it and do something with it uh, that's exciting. Um, but uh, we, uh, we, uh, the world, uh, uh, even small or large, does not change that much. Uh, the problems in healthcare uh, and the problems uh, that we heard about tonight that uh, people face are limitless. We have so much to do. I echo the comment that Anand made to any one of us, any one of you, uh, to say to young people, look for a place to make a difference in the discovery and the execution uh, of uh, new therapies. We, we cannot afford the cost of not being able to treat the diseases that we have. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart diseases, cancers, uh, diabetes, and so on. There is just not enough funds around to not come up with better treatments. And the science now starts to exist to at least to give this many shots at goal. Uh, and most things will fail. But it is an exciting way to fail. It is a very worthwhile way to fail. And uh, most things are unique observations by individuals who combine with other individuals that see something that may work. This is what we teach at Babson. This is what we heard about here. The skills and uh, energy and the adrenaline that we uh, saw so many examples of, including Len, uh, is what uh, allows these things to happen. It is what allows us to look at the full side of the glass. Uh, we, all day long we can read about healthcare being way too expensive and not solving the problems that we have. It's right. Uh, that we have our challenges, but we have tremendous opportunities uh, that come from that as well. We're fortunate, all of us, to be in this environment where so many things come together, where entrepreneurial opportunities in medicine really can make uh, tremendous uh, competitive advances. Uh, and in that sense, we have to use uh, this opportunity in a constructive way. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad to see that hundreds of small biotech companies um, have uh, started up here and turn over when they get to a dry uh, well, but start up again. And it is magnificently exciting. Uh, there is no other way for our society to thrive and to capture a measure of happiness that all of us try to capture than to make progress through innovation, to make progress through discovery, to make progress through uh, doing things in the future differently than we, the way we are doing them currently or have done them in the past. It is an exciting world to be part of, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Uh, and I'm enormously grateful for you to invite me here, to stand here, to let me stand on my soapbox, and to let me talk about something that um, I enjoy every day again. Thank you very much. Henry, thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with us and to sharing the vision and the continuing enthusiasm about pursuing opportunities that other people would simply ignore and walk away from. It really is the hallmark of entrepreneurship and it's what we've been in the business of trying to do for a long, long time as an institution. So tonight, we're getting close to the ending. Tonight you had some extraordinary act opportunities uh, to observe both the logic and activity of ba Babson in a variety of different ways. Um, this is actually for us, uh, when we come away from this event tonight, uh, this is admissions week for undergraduates. And at the end of the week, we'll have hundreds of admitted uh, Babson potential students and their families coming uh, to campus. 
Uh, and last year we had students like this presenting to the parents and the admitted students. And I then visited with the families at lunch and the standard question that would come from a parent, a mother or father as they took me aside was, if my child goes to Babson, is this what I'm getting back? <laughs> well, they gotta be more than halfway there when they come. Uh, but this is exactly the kind of population that we both attract, stimulate, move on to greatness, and push on us to do better and better things. So thank you again to the seven students who really showed us what it was all about. So thank you to them. It's about the Ramans and the Tremers. It's about families and institutions that come together to both benefit from and create extraordinary entrepreneurial opportunities that give people hope where hope doesn't exist. I only hope the next breakthrough comes through for the Ramans. And as it relates to being able to celebrate Henry Tremere's inauguration into the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, my fondest desire is to live to celebrate the Henry Tamir Scholar who will come to Babson as a member of the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Finally, I want to celebrate the Babson community that's come together here tonight. It's a small community, as you know, from a little school 13 miles west of uh, Boston and the bucolic splendor of, when, uh, of Babson Park, Massachusetts, now that we've retained our zip code. And it is an institution that has a very, very simple point of view about the world and how it works and its own role in it. And in order to be able to execute against that, I just have to say a few things before we get to closure. One, for those of you who are currently students at Babson or who are alumni at Babson, if no one's had the opportunity to say this to you as of yet, thank you for choosing Babson. We don't get to do what we do as a faculty and a staff community unless you make the choice to engage as a full member of this community. So without you, it's not possible. So please, a round of applause for all of you. To the faculty and staff who band together to actually make it all possible on a day-to-day -day basis, many of whom are here tonight, I just want to celebrate you all publicly as part of the equation. So thank you for being you. And in the spirit of thank yous, one of the things which has been intuitively obvious to me tonight and has been reminded by other people in the audience, every single male who's gotten up here tonight at some point in their presentation has thanked their wife. And it's not written in my speech. So thank you for setting a much better role example, okay, of the appropriate role of recognition of others in the success that one has, or actually in the frustrations that one experiences on a day-to-day -day in a role. So thank you, Phyllis, for being you. I think Henry put it best. When you see something, you have a responsibility to act on it. We see a world that benefits enormously from people who behave that way. It is our responsibility as a community to act on it. The world needs what we do, and we must as a community rise to the opportunity that that creates. So thank you all for celebrating the work that goes on here. Thank you all for celebrating the spectacular work of Henry Tamir and his inauguration in the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs. And we certainly look forward to seeing you uh, in Wellesley. Um, for those of you who've never been there, please write to me and we'll provide you with a map and directions and an escort if necessary. Um, it's not that far away and as we've resolved all the diplomatic issues, no visa, no passport required. Uh, we do love what we do. We do love showing it off to others. And what we do on our campus is nothing short of extraordinary. 
and our ability to bring it to the broader world is a delight, but there is something special in the water and the air in 02457. So please do join us in the activity and do recognize okay, that we will rise to the occasion. As a small institution, we need lots of partners, corporations, friends like you, alumni, other institutions, other governments. The great thing about our position in the market is we are sufficiently small, we don't threaten anybody. I mean, it's, it's marvelous, as Henry was talking a little about the issue about the entrepreneur having some sense of humility. We're not going to get that big. What we're going to do is make big things happen, okay? We don't have to be big to make big things happen. Do know this institution is absolutely committed to doing things that most people think are impossible. Making the impossible possible is in fact what entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial education is all about. And we hope you come away from here with a much deeper appreciation of the work we do here and the opportunities to democratize entrepreneurship on a global scale to create economic and social value everywhere. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Look forward to seeing you again everywhere.